All right, in a previous video, we derived this equation here for the difference in pressure in a different heights in a fluid of uniform density. And we also wrote that there's another convenient way to express this. Instead of having P2 and P1, if we want to relate things from the surface of our tank down to the, you know, to different depths of a fluid, uh, we can rename this like following. So we would have P naught minus P is equal to negative rho G, and we'd replace Y2 minus one with H. Okay, so then we bring things over and switch up with the order a little bit. So we'll get P is equal to P naught plus <clears throat> rho G H. Okay, so we're gonna call the surface. Uh, well, actually, first of all, we're gonna have this. We're gonna say that the surface of this water is open to the atmosphere. So we're gonna call this pressure P naught, which is equal to, uh, which was the same thing as P two, uh, and also we're gonna call this P. ATM, P atmospheric that's pushing, uh, pushing down on this. So we're going to call the surface, you know, this level at the surface, uh, actually, no, we'll call this 0.2. Okay. Uh, now we're going to want to find some, you know, some arbitrary pressure at some depth. So let's say we want to find the depth here. So we'll call this depth one. Uh, and the pressure here will be P1. So we have P1, or also we're just going to call that P no subscript. Okay, so let's put on some dimensions here because we want to actually solve this problem. So let's say that the height to here, we're going to call this y2, and let's give it a value. Let's say that this is going to be three meters from the bottom of the tank. We'll call this height y1, you know, to 0.1, and we'll say that this is one meter. And then obviously the difference between these two, this distance, this is going to be y2 minus y1, is equal to h, and let's say <clears throat> 3 minus 1, so that's going to be 2 meters. All right, uh, so yeah, let's, let's go ahead and solve this problem. Um, let's give it some more information. Let's say we have water at 20 degrees Celsius. So we have H2O at 20 degrees Celsius. So that, if you look in a table in a thermo or a fluids book, that will give you a density of 998 kilogram per meters cube. Uh, and let's also say we have atmospheric pressure acting on the top of this tank here on the free surface. Uh, let's say for now that that's going to be 101 kilopascals for this problem, kPa. All right, so let's find what the pressure is at P1. So we're going to have P, we can either say P or just, you know, for our reference, we'll call this, you know, P1. So P1 is going to be equal to P naught or P2 really depends on what you prefer writing, plus rho g h. So we have p naught, so we have 101,000 pascals. Uh, this is going to be plus 998 kilograms per cubic meter times acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared times height, the h is the difference, so that's two meters, times two meters. And if you go through all these units, we're actually gonna find that this actually turns out to be in pascals. So we get 101,000 pascals, plus, we're gonna get 19,000, if you just do this in your calculator, 580 pascals. And when you add these two together, we're gonna get about 120, you know, point five, eight kilopascals. There we go. So that's, we're saying the pressure right here is 120 kilopascals. And that makes sense because it has to be higher than the atmospheric pressure because it's going to be the weight of this water, you know, kind of pushing down on it as well. All right, let's call it maybe the bottom of the tank. Let's call this point three and let's find out what the pressure at the bottom of the tank is. So let's change colors here. So let's say that P3, using the same type of argument, we're going to say from the surface of the water is going to be P naught plus E, uh, rho g h. Now in this case g is going to be 3 meters because y2 minus y1, well y1 in this case we're looking at would actually be 0. So again we'll have 101,000 pascals plus 998, I'm just going to drop the units to save a little bit of time, uh, times 9.81 times 3 meters now. So we're going to get 101,000 plus 
this turns out to be 29,371. Then this is all Pascals. So we get a final uh, pressure at the bottom of the tank to be 130. 371, 130,371 pascals, or we could say 130, you know, kilopascals. All right. Now, last thing we want to do is just to kind of prove this point. What if we went? Uh, what if we used this pressure here, P1, as our referencing pressure that we're talking about P0? So let's let's look at this. Another way to solve for P3. So let's say we have P3 is going to equal P1 plus rho G H. So now we're using P1. So what do we have for P1? We had 120. <clears throat> so we had 120,580 pascals. Plus, well, our rho will be the same, 998. Dropping the units again just it takes me a lot of time to write all these times 9.81 meters per second squared times h now well our difference in height from here to here is just going to be one meter so we're going to say times one and we'll get so we have 120 580 once you multiply this out it's just 998 times 9.81 we'll get this is plus 9790 9790 and when you add these two together we get 130,370. So there's just a rounding error in here. We see we had, actually, you know what? We'll put this label on Pascals. Uh, and this is equal to, what do we have? 130 kilopascals. So look at this. We had, in this calculation, we got 130 kilopascals. That's supposed to be an A. And here, we get 130 kilopascals at the bottom of the tank by doing it this way. So you can see that if you take the pressure and you go down to here, and then you use this pressure to reference, and then you go down to here, and you keep going, you can just add them up in that way. You don't always have to go from the surface. As long as you know some reference, uh, some reference pressure, that's why we even come back to this, P2 minus P1. These are arbitrary points. So as long as you know, you know the pressures that these are, one of the pressures and the distance between them, you can always find the other pressure if you know the density of the fluid. Um, now, there's a shortcut that I like to do. Um, I'll just show it to you. I don't know if it's really widely accepted, but to save time, um, sometimes you'll be given, you know, this pressure here, and they'll say, you know, what's this pressure, or what's this pressure, or something like that. So what I do is I just have the pressure that I'm looking for is P uh, is equal to P naught. This is the pressure that I'm given, and I say plus or minus rho g h. Now, h is always going to be the distance between the two pressures, now, we know that if, as, you, as the pressure increases as you go down and it decreases as you go up. So if you're asked, if you're given this pressure and you're asked to find this pressure, it's above. So you, you know that the pressure intuitively is going to be less there, so you would subtract. You'd have P is equal to P naught minus rho GH. Versus if you're given this pressure and you're asked to find something deeper, you know that the deeper pressure, P, the one that you're asked for, is going to be greater than P naught. So you're going to have to add another term. So in order to find... So in order to find this, if you're given P naught in this case, then this P would be equal to P naught plus rho G H, right? This would have to be greater because you're at a deeper level. And this guy would have to be less pressure because there's less, you know, there's less weight on top of it of the fluid. Uh, so then here we would say this P is equal to P naught minus rho G H. So if you can figure out if you're you know, above or below the given pressure, uh, this is kind of a quicker way just to think about it in order to solve for other pressures in the same column of fluid.